I think uh, we all, uh, especially businesses and um, uh, brands, been um, already on the path of personalization for quite a while. It gives us a better tool set to have and, and build better customer journeys for, um, uh, for, for, for people, for our customers. Though, uh, if previously we were segmenting um, those into cohorts and those could be, for like in sports, you start with the categories, so you have runners, but then you can have a casual runner, a, a beginner, or um, um, a casual athlete, for instance, kind of like, but you or a recreational athlete, or you can have somebody kind of like who is doing um, um, sports uh, for a living, or um, some people kind of like that are um, looking at the performance. What we have right now, um, and what personalization enables, is to try and understand every single um, one customer. And uh, uh, the idea over here is about the product. How can we personalize the product? Uh, it's not there yet, but it's emerging actually. But uh, we need to understand how we can um, scale and address the mass production limitations. As in... Uh, the future is um, sits within customization um, and catering for specific um, needs and size and fit of uh, of a person, so that products would be built or printed for that person with uh, her needs um, in, in mind. I, I don't think that uh, anybody has resolved the, 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 this question completely, but uh, it definitely should be a focus. Um, it definitely should be a focus, especially going forward, because the competition, uh, once again, is um, there. Um, I guess uh, fr from that perspective, it is about um, advanced analytics and um, uh, constant drive for improving the insights for um, demand for customer needs and therefore um, the ability to understand actually uh, what product should be available uh, where. Um, talking about the supply chain, um, I would say that interesting developments have been happening um, in, on the partnership side. So your wholesale partners could actually serve as distribution centers as well so that you don't need to rely on your own fulfillment centers if uh, your partner, some multi-brand, multi-category, um, for instance, like marketplace, might be just much closer to the customer. So therefore, you can tap into their stock to uh, deliver something much faster than you would ever be um, able uh, to do before. And as well, of course, but it depends on what kind of brand are we talking here about. You can rely on your own brick and mortar um, um, network of uh, stores, utilizing them as fulfillment centers and so on. But um, when it comes to manufacturing, the main problem, of course, sits with the um, limitations of the production lines. That's once again, like we are aiming for the, uh, for the segments versus um, individuals. I think 3D printing is single-handedly one of those um, innovations and technologies that are going to uh, change it. And they can even uh, bring manufacturing then much closer to you by, um, depending on like, how far into the future are we looking, uh, and people being able to print the product right um, at the comfort of their own home or rely on some uh, dark stores like we use rely right now on the dark kitchens, for instance, um, uh, for them to be able like to uh, print and prepare something much faster. But then we're talking about the availability in terms of hours, not days, um, and also the uh, personalization kind of like and customization of these products. And there is still, you know, a divide in how people perceive the question of gender and uh, how um, responsive they are uh, to some brands like making a stand. Nevertheless, um, I think here you can have proactive and uh, reactive approaches or the combination of both. Proactive would be um, that you adjust and when you create your products, you uh, build 
with that idea already in mind that you are not focusing on a gender, but your navigation, for instance, like that helps people to find products, your product information. Talk, I'm talking here about the description, about the sizing. I, I'm talking here about the fit as well as um, photography, for instance, is already catering for that. We um, can still... Um, cater for it, having this product information in place, but maybe not putting it out there right in front of our customers, um, um, uh, of our entire customer base. But um, through navigation, through search, uh, still um, giving people the possibility kind of like to find this information. Uh, you know, through, for instance, like size and uh, fit filters, kind of like our um, uh, finders, give them the possibility kind of like to um, really start their journey, not from choosing men, women, kids, but from choosing just um, um, a particular category of the products and then specifying like what color do you like and uh, what size do you like and uh, then seeing uh, all of the products available in this um, uh, category. But uh, it uh, heavily depends as well on the, when we look behind the scenes, on the attribution and the, um, uh, the product development in the first place. So this should uh, not be the, um, only the responsibility of the sales channels but it should be the responsibility of the designers coming up with these products. So it should be taken into account when you design the products in the first place and you're defining like what kind of size models are you going to be using and so on and so on. The trend uh, among the um, footwear and apparel um, um, uh, re retailers and, and brands uh, was to shift from physical product design to using the 3D tool set. There are multiple advantages. One is even on the internal side uh, already, you have just much more flexibility in playing around with these designs and sharing them and therefore kind of like developing the new models and so on already based on the, um, the stuff that you have created. Secondly, it helps the internal sales process. So whenever you um, work with your um, go to market groups. Um, they don't have to travel to a specific location to experience the product, to see it from any angle, and to understand like if this is what they need or not. They can perceive it in three D environment and already make a decision: is this the right colorway? Is this the the the, the model that is gonna um, um, get enough uh, interest from their customer base? But um, besides that. Now, looking at the trends as well uh, about AR that are related to augmented reality and virtual reality, um, we see more and more, um, you know, need for the products to be existent in both worlds, the physical and the virtual. The example right now is take a look at the gaming world. So Fortnite, um, I... I I would say statistically, for instance, is one of the, the biggest uh, apparel retailers out there, even though this uh, apparel does not exist in the real world. This is just the, the, the virtual skins and um, uh, the, the items that you are um, utilizing in a game. Nevertheless, people pay for them, people enjoy them, people um, look at each other and um, constantly kind of following these trends. And Fortnite is just one of the examples. There are uh, many more. Uh, looking at the Web3 space and uh, NFTs, for instance, this is another part like where we have the possibility of decentralized world with um, um, smart contracts to give you an ability to prove that this is your item and this is something kind of like that belongs to you. In combination with the PFPs, so with the um, um, personal profiles, you can assign these uh, looks, you can assign these garments to your virtual um, uh, profiles and it goes beyond gaming, it goes to the social media and um, um, any kind of uh, communities and so on. Um, examples to uh, look at is um, Ready Player uh, Me, um, for instance, are doing a lot of uh, good stuff by uh, creating a platform for um, interoperable um, items um, that can be uh, created in one universe or Metaverse or whatsoever, like, and then used um, in the other one as well. 
And finally, um, um, I, I would mention over here, um, the garments that uh, have been specifically created only for the digital use, and uh, therefore they don't need to be bound to the limitations of the physical world. So they can have additional um, specifications that can be animated. They can use fabrics that would never be uh, possible in the real world. So they can be just much more um, interesting to look at. But with the augmented reality stepping into the, the place, we could see these items uh, uh, on, on people and we can enjoy them and work. we can uh, wear them um, ourselves as well. 